All right, gentlemen. Um, I think our kids are excited about getting into ACC play. And um, <coughs> um, I think they're ready to roll. So, questions? Hey, you had a couple of teams in your time here that were really good on the road. What what sort of characteristics do you look for in a team that tells you that they're ready to, to go on the road in a hostile environment and, and get some wins? I don't know. I mean, I hope they're ready to go home or away. doesn't really matter. I mean, we don't care where we're playing. Um, I think it's always, you know, you know, you're not looking for characteristics, but you're looking for guys that like, you know, like to challenge, like to go into a different atmosphere, a different stadium, and, and, you know, that like to get booed. I mean, I, I don't know if there's any athletes that don't like that. You kind of, it's kind of a fun atmosphere to go into somebody else's house and and disrupt things. So that's kind of you know, what we like to do. That's the plan going uh, down to Atlanta or on any road trip. When we talked to Brandon Hill, he talked about a lot about how Corey Sanders has been training their eyes to stay on their man and coverage and not worry about other things. Does that kind of go into what you've been talking about? <coughs> you know, not trying to do so much to help other people stay on your assignment, be assignment specific. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, it's, it's at every position, Chris. I mean, it's, you know, there's, um, you know, it's a D lineman, it's a center that's got to have great eye. I mean, your eyes are, you know, are so important in the game of football. Uh, your mind is important. Your eyes are important. You know, everybody's got to have their eyes on something. Um, you know, I heard Alex Officer yelling at our, you know, one of our GAs, obviously former offensive lineman, former center, uh, yelling at uh, Terrence Moore. Um, I should say yelling at him, but just coaching him up like, what are you doing? Um, you know, he gets down, and the first thing he does, he's got his head down, kind of, you know, you know, adjusting the ball. It's like you got to have your eyes up and see what's going on uh, at all times. And, you know, so it doesn't matter position. You know, linebacker's got to have his eyes focused where it's supposed to be. You know, different defense, we have different keys that we're looking at. So you have to know where, where to put your eyes. Uh, so you need your eyes trained. And, and obviously, you know, you might not see a fatal eye uh, thing up front, uh, whether it's a defensive end. Uh, or a D lineman, or even a linebacker for that matter, but the ones you see are the ones in the back end. Those everybody gets to see those. You know, it's on ESPN, uh, becomes a big play, and and sometimes when you're staring in the backfield, you know, everybody likes to see. There's only one ball, and they like to stare in the backfield. And sometimes we let them do that too. Um, but when you're supposed to be, you know, have eye control on your guy and and play with proper leverage, I mean, it's that's important. And when he's stemming you, you got to know what he's doing to you. Um, you know, a corner's got to have his eyes on the guy's hips when he, you know, releases. You know, if he, when he's going to break, you know, break out, you know, get into his breaking point. So, um, you know, those are all a lot, you know, fine, fine, fine details. It's good Brandon's talking about. But you better have eye control in the back end. And, and the safeties, you know, a lot of times are king, their number two receiver. And, and uh, they got him. It's what will get you on RPOs. Guys that, you know, you know, we coach it every single day where guys, you know, running an RPO, runs a route, and, but they want to peek back there and see, was it a run? You know, they want to, you know, go see if it's a run. Well, guess what? You know, you don't know it. Um, and, you know, there's periods out there in team where we're, you know, we're running the ball and we're throwing a pass at the same time. So there's two plays going on at the same time um, just to get them a rep out there and a rep inside for the run game. Um, and, again, there's never two balls, but they always want to get get nosy. So we try to train them by, you know, throwing those, you know, those RPOs in practice. Corey, Corey told us that uh, you guys always track, you know, where the stripes of the helmets are pointed to, to, to see that. But he also said it kind of ramped up recently. Was that part of – what you guys saw after the Western Michigan tape? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's always ramped up, but you know, I think you know you're always looking at that. You get, you know, um, you know, it hadn't ramped up for me, but maybe you know, I know Coach Sanders been on him hard about where their eyes are and finishing the play and and, and, and driving on the route. Pat, is it just one of those little details that really get in college and maybe in high school you didn't have to have as good eyes because uh -huh. you were just physically better. Yeah, you're physically better, and you know they don't have a bunch of Division One team, you know, players on the other side. You might have a great quarterback over there, but you don't have a line that can block, you know, yet. But you know, at this level, you know, and at that level out there, you better. It's the details. So those are the little details, and every position's got them. You can have a list of ten or fifteen things that you must do um, at every position just to be, you know, on that first team. But then you lose. Sometimes you lose your eyes, and you get tired, and you get lazy, and and uh, important. What have you seen from your linebackers this year? And has anything changed for their responsibilities this year without, like, uh, Rashad and Patrick up front? No, nothing's changed. I mean, we play what we do. You know, we have tweaks in for everything, you know, including RPOs and all that and when you when you can use them. And, um, but, um, you know, nothing's really changed. I mean, they're doing what they do. We're not adding anything to their, their plate as far as what they do and how they do it based on not having Rashad and, and Patrick. Will there be enough snaps for three running backs? And how did the three running backs do in practices? 
It's hard, Jerry. It's not easy. Um, but uh, you know, we'll go out the same plan, you know, um, you know, with Vince and Izzy to start off with, and then we'll give Rodney a chance and let him go out there and and uh, you know find out who's got the hot hand. But you know, we'll kind of go out with the same plan. But you know, there's a place for Rodney, you know, Hammond for sure. Georgia Tech really got after Sam Howell last week uh, with UNC. What kind of things <coughs> are you guys keying in on for protection-wise to keep Kenny safe in this game and let him do his thing? You know, we got to protect the quarterback. I mean, it's it's uh, it's critical. You know, they, again, it's something they do. And, you know, our defense, our offense is used to seeing some three down and, and bringing different pressures. And, um, you know, we're going to have to play a great technique up front. You know, Owen Drexel is going to get things operating the right way. and and get our people in the right way. And I'm sure they'll, they'll have some more for us that we haven't seen on tape, so we're going to have to adjust to whatever that is. And, um, and you know, we've got to protect Kenny, and uh, that's a priority going into the game. Does that, does that mean Owen's playing? playing? What's that? Does that mean Owen's playing? Uh, yes, it does mean Owen's playing. Okay. So. There you go. <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> that's a good word. What Owen's you, playing. What do, you, uh, what do you think of this Georgia Tech defense? What what? Just as like like a defensive coach, what kind of catches your eye about the way they they're implementing that scheme? You know, I just love how they play. I mean, you know, they play like you're supposed to play the game of football. They play they play with an attitude. They play fast, um, and uh, and they're, they're a little bit re- reckless. And I think uh, it's a good thing. They'll turn it loose, and um, they're they're talented and, and well coached. How does the changes they made? How does that make them different this year? Um, you know, again, it went from a four down to a three down. That's what makes them different. And, you know, I think they're putting their best athletes on the field. Maybe they didn't feel like they had 4D linemen that they liked. Um, you know, so, you know, they're just putting more athletes on the field. They've got them down south. They've got them in Georgia. And, um, and they're playing fast and playing at a high level right now. So we're going to have to protect the quarterback. And obviously, you know, uh, UNC did. And so we'll find out, you know, where our protection is compared to their protection. Is what they're doing. And then, you know, Kenny's got to get the ball out, too. Are they doing some similar stuff to what you do on third downs? Is it similar, but not, you know, it's, it's different. It's different. It's, you know, I would say it's, it's different. In your experience, is it, is it easier or harder to run against a three-man a three line compared to a four-man line? It depends on who those guys are over there, you know. If I lied, you guys all up in the streets for it, it'd be easy. It didn't matter what the front you lined up in, okay? Um, but, Scheme-wise, I'm talking about. You know, it, 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 I would say it's harder and it's easier. You know, I mean, there's a, there's a little bit. It all depends on what your runs are and what you're doing and how you're doing it. So uh, the, the big difference is it's new. Yeah, it does make a difference because it's different. Uh, so the difference is, is, is it easier or harder? It would be easier for our guys if they worked against it every single day. Uh, but what makes it hard is it's like going against the wing T. You know, you go against the wing T, you get to see it one time a year or one time. Um, so it's totally new for you, and, and uh, you know, so that's new. And I'm sure it's new for North Carolina. They didn't expect it, you know, as much as maybe they got it. Maybe they thought it was just a Clemson thing. And um, but you know, we, we know we're going to see it. We know what we got. And hopefully, that's an advantage. You've always had an aggressive defensive front. You got guys like Hava and Kenny Kansi and Camp who are getting after it and they're used to rushing the passer. But is there a sense of like, hey, you guys got to be a little more patient in this game with with the athletic quarterbacks today? Like, what's the kind of adjustment that you make when you're facing? It? Kind of to me, you don't want to slow down. Um, you know, we were worried about the quarterback last week. I mean, we we're going to face a good quarterback every week. Um, and again, I thought the kid last week was talented. Um, so you don't want to slow down. I don't want to put our guys in this, this hesitate, slow down. Let's, you know. So I always talk about this, and you guys have probably heard me talk about it. You know, there's two modes we always put our kids in, and one mode I hate. So very rarely do we ever ever have to go to that. There's capture mode, which we're trying to capture, make sure you don't get out of the pocket, which just gives them all kinds of time to. To get home, or it's kill mode, and we're going after them. And you know, uh, very rarely are we in that capture mode. Maybe on a down and distance, maybe in a certain defense, we're in that where you're trying to spy the quarterback. But it's it's kill mode um, is the mode that we like to be in, you know, weekly. And uh, let our guys go, trust them to go make a play, and, and uh, turn it loose and get there. You know, it's kind of like you know breaking down on a tackle or you know taking a shot. You know, I like to go take a shot at the guy, not give him a chance to, to wiggle you and break you down. Um, so we like to take a shot, and we always talk about if you're going to miss, which side do you miss on? Uh, but go take a shot. And we've got to do a better job at that as well. Obviously, the passing game this year has been pretty successful for you guys. How do you balance, uh, you know, sticking with what's working, but also trying to, you know, improve the running game each week? Um, you know, you've got to continue to work on it. I mean, uh, we, we, you know, we've known for a couple of years that Kenny could throw it. Our, our receivers out there are good. Uh, it would be a you know ways to sit there and you know keep running it up in there when you can have some talented guys and you, and you trust your passing game, but sooner or later that runs out um, and, and something goes bad and you got to be able to run it. So we've got to you know we've got to test the run, we've got to get it up in there and 
And, uh, and again, I, I think the run game gets going after you continue to run it. Um, it's hard to get in a rhythm, you know, when you go three and out. So that, that hurts your run game immediately. So you got to get it. What's, you know, when our offense gets a first down, you know, things start to roll. And that's the big thing is let's get a first down and get into a rhythm. It's hard as heck as a play caller to, to call an offense when you're three and out. Like there's nothing set up, setting up anything. You know, it's like three plays and you had no time to set up a certain formation or, you know, a run or a pass. So, um, you know, but we got to get our run game going. And again, I feel like once we do start getting it going that you can get it going. Uh, but you know, sometimes you, you know you're going to take you know one yard gain, one yard gain, one yard gain, two yard gain, one yard TFL to get that 40 yard run. And you just got to you got to go with it. But it all comes down to the time. You know what's 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 the defense doing when they're on the field, and uh, and you know it's, it's you know having some patience, but not too many patience. I don't have a whole lot of patience. So. Yeah. What is their rotation at quarterback? Is there, is there a reason that they just ride a hot hand? Like no, Jeff. You know, in the opener, you know, obviously Sims started. Um, and uh, Sims got hurt, ran his own read keeper and, and hurt his shoulder, it looks like on tape. I don't, I don't get their injury report. Maybe Jared, you got the injury report? I'll let you know later. Um, <laughs> how about now? Um, so it appeared to be a, a, a shoulder injury uh, on kind of a, you know, a, a zone read. He was trying to keep it in a three by one tray set and, and uh, dropped the ball, had to dive after it, and I think got hurt you know, uh, following that play, I believe. And I don't know if it was nagging in practice the week before or not, so you don't know what was going on there. So then Yates took over and uh, and ran the offense. And then, you know, he started. He was doing well. And he's a good football player. He's fast. He, he can do a lot of different things. I think he throws the ball well and makes good decisions. And then, you know, they, 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 they had planned on putting in, you know, Sims, I believe, uh, at some point in that game. And then he just sparked, you know, he sparked some quarterback runs. And, you know, it's not just, you know, quarterback draws or scrambles, Chris, as you're talking. It's more of, um, you know, um, you know, they have some you know legit quarterback counters and, and runs that are specific for him. You know, whether it be a quarterback draw, uh, quarterback counter. So they'll have some stuff that maybe we haven't seen. They'll have designated quarterback runs, designed quarterback runs, I should say, uh, for Sims for sure. And you know, Gates will follow and do the same things at times, just not as many. Is the key for you defensively to keep Sims in the pocket? Your ends coming up and making sure that that doesn't you know, escape. The key is to go get him. Right, we, you know, it's not contain them. We want to go get them, and um, as you know, Chris asked earlier. So we just want to go get the guy and um, go make a play. That's their job. Kill over capture. Yes. Thanks. Get educated man down there. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to. I mean, we're not going to contain him and keep him in there and let him have all day to throw it. As soon as you tell a guy to do that, they start to. Uh, your coach says I can't lose contain, so they stay on the edge and they rest soft. Then your guys, your tackle coming to the middle. Yeah. Guy like Kansi could take advantage of the guy him sitting in the pocket. Yeah, he could. But because of that mobility, they might have two guys on him, right? That's true. So with that mobility, team. you need to make sure that your back end guys are staying on the receivers because of the extra time. That's right. So you just got to go play football. It's no different than any other game. We played athletic quarterbacks before, so. Jordan leads the nation in touchdown receptions right now. Um, I know he's got to be excited, but what kind of messages are you guys pumping into him? Because he's, he's a young – Kenny's kind of you – know, he's been here a long time. He gets that. But, you know, he this is his second year ACC play. What kind of message are you guys trying to do to keep him in check, or do you feel like that's something you guys even have to do? You know, I don't think we have to keep him in check. Um, you know, Jordan is a special, special kid. You know, she should probably put you with the media. He's just like this every day. I mean, you get the same. There's never, I never have to say, Jordan, what are you doing? I never have to tell him to clean his locker. I never have to tell him to, you know, to take his hat off at a meal. You know, he, Jordan is, is Jordan Hassan. You know, his mom, Keisha, has done an unbelievable job of raising him, and he's just like this. And, um, you know, he never gets too high or too low. He stays right down the middle and um, not a guy that I have to say, you know, you know he's not going to take a practice off because this hurts or that hurts. He goes and plays every day. Coastal Division has become somewhat notorious for being wide open. You guys did a commercial about it, I think, even. Um, I didn't do any commercial. Uh, I thought there was, maybe, I don't know if you were in, maybe. There was some, yeah, there was some, some stupid commercial yeah, yeah. I thought was embarrassing, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think the ACC put it together. It was kind of a joke. Um, but I wasn't real happy with that, but we didn't have anything to do with that. Does What what does that do, though, for you? you, know, do, you do you talk about that with your team, that this is a division that, you know, 
Yeah, you got you guys can win it. Everybody, but everybody thinks that too. The, 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 every every coming at the beginning of ACC play, every locker room is sitting there thinking, "Yeah, we can win this thing." Yeah, Alan, we're not you know we're, we're not getting to you know winning. It. We we need to win to you know this is the ACC championship game in down Atlanta. It's a one game season. We got an open week afterwards. We put everything we can into this one game, and then we'll put everything into that next game. And you know. What I don't want our guys is looking like, oh yeah, we can win it. You know, Coastal Atlantic. You know, we can play Clemson in championship game. Normally, it's a, it's a slam dunk. Um, but, you know, we know who we're going to play if we get there. But we just got to take one game at a time. And I know that's, you guys think it's coach speak, but it's real talk. You look ahead, you're going to get punched in the mouth. And uh, I, I don't like getting punched. I like to throw the swing first. Uh, you, ain't, you ain't getting a shot on me. Adults think that way, but do, are kids able to think that way in your experience? You know, I think our kids are good. I think they understand that. You start looking ahead, you're going you're gonna to have an issue. Um, I think they, you know, there's a lot of things I don't think they can do, but that's one thing I think that they, they understand that. I really do. I think they get it. Um, there's got to be total focus. I mean, if you got 75% focus, we just talked about eyes, okay? Think, you think about your brain. If your brain's not focused on today, okay, what you can do today. I mean, even, you know, we're not looking forward to Saturday. Today we're looking forward to what we did in practice today. Tomorrow we're looking through, you know, walk through and meetings and cleaning up the details. But there's a, every day we just can't go too far ahead. And, you know, it's day by day, even though the focus is on Georgia Tech, it's focused on us. You know, we can't beat ourselves on Thursday. We can't beat ourselves on Friday. You know, we have to take care of Pitt football first. Saturday's coming, and we'll get that other different color jersey over there, but we have to take care of Pitt first. And I think our kids get that. I don't think there's a lot of things, you know, do they, you know, do they think they can win games maybe that, you know, they think are going to be easier than, now I don't know if I can control that, you know. Um, you know, you hope you can in your building for two, three hours a day, but what happens the other, you know, 18, 19 hours a day, I don't know. That singular focus might have helped you again against him like New Hampshire. You know, they didn't let, you know, they had to know that New Hampshire would be the FCS team and they still had a good effort anyway. Sometimes you have to learn the hard way, right? And you, you don't like to, you know, learn the hard way. But like I said after that game, I mean, rather learn there than learn in the ACC because you know the, the, our goals are there. But again, you know, our goals are you know Georgia Tech, one team. It's all that matters. Game number five. You keep going there. They fly by. You don't get many opportunities. Okay. Yeah.